Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Princess Evangel W Happiness. I figured it was a fundamental stance that it wouldn't be a big deal at all, but I was left wide-eyed. To be specific, because the way she conducted herself was so very magnificent. Her back was stretched perfectly straight. I was convinced she could react and counter any attack that came at her when I saw her point her Naginata unwaveringly at my solar plexus. Yeah, just the way you, uh, you handle that stick. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. We are now on an afternoon break, and we decided to make our own lunch. Huh? Are you sure? Really? Thank you, I'd be happy to have some then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We decided to eat lunch along the shore of the nearby lake. I was surprised to see a lake on top of everything else, but I would have personally preferred to have eaten in the dojo with the floral aroma of the girl's scent hanging in the air. Of course. I knew that was a very perverted sounding comment, but I really did like the bittersweet aroma of sweat. No, really. Only from girls, though. Not from the guys, but only from the girls. Who the heck am I talking to? Maybe hanging around and exercising with the underclassmen was short-circuiting my brain? I had practiced Kendo in the middle of last summer and it was just awful. The stifling aroma of manly muscle was enough to ruin even my healthy appetite. Yeah, see? But it smelled nothing like that in the dojo earlier. Regardless of the fact that there was just as much sweat wafting in the air. Girl's sweat is nice. Club members showed up after a short while, and Konomi chan followed after them carrying a pot with both hands. I can carry that. It, it is? As usual, Konomi chan was fired up in more ways than one. Dan? The leftover? Did you make it in advance? I really liked how upfront she was about it. You're so cute, Konomi chan. Oh, uh, uh. Crap, I messed up. Do you know how heartwarming it was and how worn out I was from practicing? I said exactly what I'd been thinking. So, uh, since you were scarfing down your meal in the cafeteria this morning, I, I thought it was cute how you were kind of a glutton, I guess? Uh, oh, I, I didn't say it was a bad thing. Club members watched the exchange between Konomi chan and I, looking utterly astounded. Wow, there's a place like this on Mount Amuro. A cool, comfortable breeze was blowing in from across the lake. This is nice. Maybe even nicer than eating at the dojo. Another slip of the tongue. I scratched my head and gave an ambiguous laugh. Now that everyone had their food in hand, they formed a circle and started eating. When Obi-chan was in the center, setting aside her position as club president, she seemed to be extraordinarily popular with everyone. I guess that's a given to considering how cute and strong she is. I thought it would be bad if I interrupted and sat off in the corner. It's delicious. The veggies were a little disproportioned, but there was something special about homemade curry while looking out at the lake. There were a total of six members in the Naginata Club, which made it the smallest club on campus. Oh, really? I thought it was like a big, you know, group. Budo 
Aww. Nomi chan revealed to me as we were practicing stances. There were so few members of this club, but they could certainly take up a talk of a storm. With that said, they mostly talked about Naginatas, and I heard something about their next tournament. Do they have a tournament sometime soon? Huh. After lunch, it was back to practice. Oh, that was fast. The characteristic hand work. Nomi chan mentioned before I had been referring to operating in Naginata. From her middle guard stance, she raised her blade while simultaneously shifting it between her hands, taking a striking stance. Nomi chan slid her hands inward. After striking the forearm, she returned to her middle guard stance. The dizzying, flowing movement of her Naginata wouldn't even be conceivable in Kendo. After performing that last move, she stood the Naginata on the floor on its end, taking a natural stance. Yes. Nomi Chan was far more knowledgeable on the subject than I was, so I ended up answering her like so. Practice ended upon the setting of the sun. Sorry for the trouble, but thank you. The club members were sitting at the lodge, but there was no telling what the headmistress would say if I were to do the same. As such, I decided to head back to my dorm room. Flashlight? I don't need that. Yeah. There are no lights lining the mountain trail, and while we could use the light from the stars, having a flashlight would probably be best. Oh, she spooked up the dark. That was the real reason, huh? That reminded me. She seemed really uneasy at that time when we got trapped in the bathroom and the power went out. Huh? Nomi-chan was so cute back then. We were nested up close in nothing but our swimsuits. Oh? Uh, that place didn't give me any emotional breathing room at the time, but looking back on it, we did have a nice mood going. Oh my gosh, we called the night, yes! <laughs> oh, we got trapped in here? It occurred to me that Konomi-chan was hugging herself and trembling. Are you cold? Konomi-chan shook her head. Oh, I see. I'm here with you. I didn't expect that to be much comfort, but to my surprise, Konomi-chan moved over to cling to me. Aw, she spooked of the dark. But sure. Here in the dark with our bodies close together, the sensation was even more stimulating than before. But there was nothing arousing about the situation. On the contrary, I knew that I had to be strong. Konomi-chan will pick up on any signs of fear that I show. I took her by the hand and led her over to the wall. We get tired if we stay standing. Let's sit down. Sit down first. Konomi-chan sat next to me, her body continuing to tremble. Oh, it's okay. Oh, it's so kawaii. You don't have to apologize. Well, we have plenty of water. A human being can live for a whole week on just water alone. There's nothing to worry about. 
I thought it... Wasn't it like three months or something? Or three weeks or something? Well, joking aside, help will come soon. The night can't last forever. Hi. In the silence, I was even more conscious of the sounds of the bath. The steady drip drip from the ceiling. But more than anything, there was a breathing right beside me. As my eyes adjusted to the dark, I could see that Konomi-chan was visibly stiff. Yep, yep, her face is visibly stiff, alright. What do you do with the lights when it's time to sleep? I thought it was best to talk, no matter what it was about. I see. Personally, I can't sleep unless it's pitch black. A, a night raid? We'll be running a night raid on you. Besides, if they were really serious, they'd probably just pull out the plug first. Ah ha ha, you're an interesting person, Konomi-chan. I've never met a girl who's worried about night raids before. I don't think that's true. It suits you. It really does. Whoa, what happened to your eyes? They're gone! This is spoopy now. For now, she appeared unhappy when I insisted on that point, but this time she seemed to like it. Is your grandmother the one who taught you the Naginata? Started prompting her to tell me more about her childhood. As she spoke, I could tell the tension was draining out of her. The tension was apparently replaced by exhaustion. She attempted to stifle a yawn. Turned my eyes towards the changing room. Things looked pretty much the same there. The door probably wasn't going to open. Sleepy? Oh. You can sleep then. You can't stay up all night after all. I'll stay up until you go to sleep. Oh. The opposite of how it was in the classroom. I don't know if that means anything though. Ha ah, ha ha. I am. Konomi-chan's expression relaxed and she rested her head on my shoulder. I wasn't prepared for her to go that far. I found my heart pounding a bit. Seems Konomi-chan had spent the whole day going from one sort of tension to another. But she finally began producing the noises of peaceful sleep. She really must have been exhausted. Ever since the teaching started, her mind had been constantly engaged. Even in our state of dress, it was warm inside the bath. When she was fast asleep, I felt my own eyelids grow heavy. That's right, I wonder if I passed the test. I had gone through all that and I still didn't know if I passed or failed. Oh well, anyway. The echoes of the bath and the pleasant warmth against my skin slowly pulled me into unconsciousness. Oh... Yeah, thinking back on it now, we really did have a nice mood going. That was what happened when trapped in the bathroom. Oh. Well, I'm gonna end the episode here, everybody. We'll find out how the walk goes in the next episode. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you, everybody, for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Goodbye!